your attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts... Attention, please. It's time for the final countdown. <laughs> the show starts in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, go!
Let's say praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Let's say praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are here this morning to have our final recognition, celebration, and the putting away of our dear little girl, Leon Howell, affectionately known as Tony. I'll be your moderator this morning. My name is Gladstone Johnson. I will invite the funeral attendees to close the casket now as we get ready to commence. No, therefore, no, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God. The faithful God which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. 
The eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath his wings are the everlasting arms. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at the last day upon the earth, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in the time of trouble. The name of the Lord is a strong tower, the righteous running into it, and is safe. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name. I invite you to stand this morning as we commence our program with singing for the congregational hymn. It's in your program. Oh, I want to see you as I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the cliffs of the
So if you plan to do five verses, we're going to cut it down to two and the chorus, okay? Tell the neighbor then, short. short. And just in case the person comes in late, when they come in, just tell them short, okay? Amen. God bless you. So, we're going to be having this morning our first lesson, and it comes from the book of Psalm 90, verses 1 to 12. It's going to be read by Jonathan Howard, who is a nephew of the deceased. Jonathan, God bless you. Even the beginning. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction, and sayest, Return ye children of men, for a thousand years in thy sight are but as yesterday. When it is past, and as a watch in the night, thou carriest them away as with a flood. They are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up. In the morning it flourisheth and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath, and, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast sent our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten, and if by reason of strength they be fourscore years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Who knoweth the power of thine anger, even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. This is a portion of God's word and I'm going to sing this message. Turn to your neighbor and say to them, teach me to number my days that I might apply my heart to this God. Amen. So here we go. We are having the tributes in clusters. Do we have Mr. Whittier Balu? He's here? Great. Followed by St. Joseph Hospital. Are you here? The representative from the St. Joseph Hospital? What about um, Jennifer Henry? Great. Alright, so we're going to have those two tributes coming immediately, and uh, that will be a tribute to the song coming from Jennifer Henry Bay, which is a cousin of the deceased. She will be followed by Valorant, and then we see how we treated the group coming from St. Joseph, Joseph's Hospital. Uh, what I will do is move Danny. No, she's doing the second message. All right, so come um, Jennifer and Valorant. You do your tributes accordingly. God bless you. Good morning, everybody. Shall we worship the Lord? Shall we give him some worship? Hallelujah. 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 If I could count the tears that are falling, it could seem like an ocean to me. And if my heart were a window, you could look through. And though the pain of stars, you would see. Oh, 
propitiated ministers seated at the rostrum, all the members of the clergy in the congregation, band members, church members, grieving family members, and friends. You know, I stand here this morning to raise a tribute to a dear friend. A friend indeed is usually a friend in need. And we are here to celebrate the life of Tony. As the scripture reader said a few minutes ago, teach me, Lord, to number my days that I may apply my heart unto wisdom. And when we speak of the days or the years, and you know, according to the Holy Scriptures, it says the years of a man a number three scores and ten. Yes, Tony filled in a short of his three, three scores and ten, but he still lived many, many good years. And when I think of this, it comes home to me that it's not so much the years in the life, but more so the life during those years. You know? And uh, one of the greatest commandments, and certainly, you know, second to you should have no other, serve no other, no other God before the great creator is to love your neighbor as yourself. This was the kind of person that Tony was. Yes, ma'am. All who knew him would know that he was a man who was always ready to lend a hand, to give service in one way or the other. And as much as we all know that he mastered the craft of electrical installation, he was also good at so many other things. He was jack in many, many other trades. And I'm sure the members of staff of the St. Joseph Hospital really looked at that. Yes, man, we, we loaned him to, to you for a little while. As he mentioned from us there, my dear friend, a lady who invited me to serve at Prozid Hospital many, many, many years ago. You know, good to see you, Major. Tony would be the man who would come to be stuck in your bar if you never had an accountant to do it for you. He would be the man who would help you to open your friend if you never had someone, you never had the time to. Many times, later at night, I would see him and one of his friends at the bar and be there just looking over because that friend may be gone somewhere. So he's giving an eye, you know, to the management of the, of the, of the bar. He'd be a man you could call if you have an emergency any hour of the night, and he'd be there to help you out. If you're traveling somewhere and want a company, he'd be there to assist you. Company will really make a very, very good friend. You know, I know this community will miss him a hell of a lot, you know, and I'm looking in the, in the congregation here for Mr. Harris and, 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 and Donald Hill, two of his very, very close friends. But I left them late last night, sometime after one, because we gathered celebrating the life of Tony in a particular kind of fashion. I'm happy I was able to wait this morning, but I'm here. But amidst all that, it is my fervent wish that somewhere along this journey he founded Jesus Christ. Somewhere along this journey he was able to whisper a word to him. Somewhere along this journey he found peace with him. Because that itself would also be a very important part of the journey and of the socialization. We as comrades, 
acknowledge him as being one of us. You know, he's always encouraging me during my political journey and telling me that time come now to be a free way. That was the kind of person that told me was. You know, yes, ma'am. That's the kind of person he was. So, as we stand in celebration of this life, let us remember him as somebody who we want to emulate because of the sharing that we saw in his life, of the kindness that we saw in his life, of the kind of example of being a brother, building that bond of brotherhood. So I just want to say to you, family members especially, keep heart. Your brother lived a life that we all participated in and we will miss him. And we know that somewhere along the line we will meet again. May soul rest in peace and light up a day shine for you. Thank you. Somebody said to me recently, two, two sets of persons did me not give a mic, a politician, and a preacher. <laughs> Amen. But we thank you, sir, for your kind tributes. And as we continue on, we, we understand that the group from St. Joseph's Hospital has now arrived, but we're going to give them a few more moments. So we're going to move to our second lesson which is coming from the book of 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 13 to 18. It will be read by Denise Powell, which is the niece of the deceased, and she will also use the opportunity to deliver a tribute on behalf of Shevanese Powell, who is a daughter of the deceased, but is unable to be here this morning. She will be followed by Martin Fowler, who will do a tribute to song. Please remember the key word this morning is? Please remember the key word this morning is? Shall I say it one more time? Please remember the key word this morning is? God bless you. In the intricate tapestry of life, unexpected twists define Tony and I's journey. Our story did commence with the warmth of early memories, but unfolded as a connection waiting to be forged. This tribute explores our unique journey, navigating unfamiliar territory in a relationship that blew to dates but had a profound impact. Tony's late presence added warmth to my life. His laughter, like a beautiful melody, brought comfort and turned ordinary moments into treasured memories. As the pages turned, I marveled at the lessons he imparted, 
lessons of forgiveness, of embracing the imperfect, As the pages turn, I marvel at the lessons he imparted. Lessons of forgiveness, of embracing the imperfect, and of enduring strength. In his stories, I found inspiration, and in his mistakes, I discovered the humility that accompanies growth. The contemplation of Tony's passing is hard. As I recall in the week preceding his death, the last phone call he had was filled with shared laughter and future plans. Painting a picture of happiness. A few hours prior to his death, I sent him a message checking on his well-being. I received a positive response. He said I'm great, filled with some exciting news. Unbeknownst to me, this last conversation would mark the closure of his presence in my life. Today, though I am sad, gratitude fills my heart as I reflect on the positive memories eternally etched within. Tony imparted invaluable life lessons, indirectly shaping the foundation for the strong, resilient, and fearless woman I proudly embody today. I thank God for the transformative power of reconciliation a celebration of the uncharted territory we navigated together, proving that love, when given a chance, can bloom even in the most unexpected seasons of life. Evidently, Tony cannot do anything at this point, but certainly we can by we can sorry by doing the right thing to those living their best life without God. Don't let death surprise you without accepting Jesus as your Savior. Tony, you will be missed. Rest in peace. Love always. Your God, a shepherd.
Joseph's Hospital is here, so we invite you to come with your tribute. And while you're making your way, I want you to remind your neighbor that by and by, when the morning comes, we will understand it better. Amen? Amen. The group rocks in Joseph's Hospital, and we say bye and bye. Mr. Howell had an indomitable 
in spirit. You could always call on him to assist when the hospital is in need. He was indeed a people person and showed respect for all levels of staff. Based on his performance evaluation over the years, he consistently scored highly in areas such as attendance and punctuality. Team orientation has indicated the war is indomitable in spirit and flexibility just to look at him. He has surely left a void in the maintenance. And so we give God thanks for his life and for the time he spent with his SJH family. A good heart has stopped beating, but a good soul has ascended into them. May his soul rest in peace and light perpetual shine. At this time, the choir will smile the song. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Tribute from Andrew Howell. There are many definitions of a great man. For some, greatness is measured in accolades and achievements. But for me, it is also embodied within the quiet strength of Tony's character, the depth of his generosity, and the unwavering loyalty he exhibited towards those he cared for. I met Tony about 19 years ago, and in absolute confidence, I can say, he maintained to me at death the way he was during our relationship in life. It has been generally thought that to truly know someone is to live with them, and it is from that very special virtual view that I pay tribute to Tony today. You see, I did not just know Tony in passing as a brother-in-law, at family gatherings or other special occasions. I knew him because I had the very profound privilege of living with him. Tony was a man of remarkable simplicity, but also of great depth. His laughter was infectious, and his ability to find joy in the simplest of things was a lesson in humility and in living life to the fullest. I found that Tony had a quiet way of making those around him feel comfortable and valued, which is, in my mind, a testament to his genuine, gentle, and caring nature. I found Tony to be far more intelligent and perceptive than his casual demeanor and unassuming disposition suggested. He represented the heartbeat of the household, where now Marie, Gary, my own mom, Miss Dell, and Howie looked forward to his presence, though often quiet, but charming and comforting. There are countless memories that, I will, that will remain etched in our hearts, from those moments where his sense of humor was the highlight of a story, to those moments where his insights and wisdom brought clarity to a situation. From that fragile seat of living with Tony, I also saw that to his brother, my husband Gary, he was more than a sibling, he was a lifelong friend. Their bond was a tapestry of brotherly love, mutual respect, 
and moment that has both the joys and challenges of this life that they journey together. I noticed that though Tony was older than Gary, he respected him completely and unabashedly. As for me, there was never a moment with him that I can recall that was unpleasant. He was for me that brother-in-law that always made me feel welcome and loved me for the, and loved, and for that I love him in return. For many, he may have appeared complex, but for me, he was not. He was lovable, always warm, endearing, and loyal to a fault. For me, he was the very embodiment of kindness, compassion, and affability. And so today, as we pay tribute to this man who appears to have led a simple and uneventful life, for me, his impact was great, great, because he taught me the value of compassion, strength and quiet resilience, and the profound wisdom in everyday moments. When I married Gary, Tony welcomed me into his family. When I welcomed him into our home, he welcomed me into his life. And therefore, we formed a bond that became unshakable. I pay tribute to Tony today because in life, there was no doubt that he made me feel like I belonged. Like I was his biological sister. As I celebrate his life today, I cherish those memories that I will forever hold dear because though I met him as an in-law, I put him to rest today as my brother, forever, Andrea. the chapter of life, he left me with this phrase, 
Michel, do take care, which keeps reverberating in my ears. We were hoping to see him in Canada, in Canada the following week. Tony, you are sadly missed by Joseph, Jomi, Emily, Jamari, and me. Like Thomas Wilder, we are saying, it's hard to turn the page when you know someone won't be in the next chapter. But the story must go on. We will always remember you, Tony. Rest in peace, Tony, and may life perpetual fall on you, my brother.
will find rest in the eye.
John Brown. This is the first time you know him that you're a John because everybody calls me Tony. <laughs> so Brooks is here. <laughs> He's not here? Alright, while we sort that out, uh, we're going to invite Faith Diagula to come and she has a tribute in song and she will be followed by Minister Audrey Shaw with Adrian or his comments. something 
but we mustn't take for granted. Everyone listening right now, remember, remember something that my mother taught me and my twin sister early in life. She said, hold oh, an Audrey, look in the mirror, point at yourself, and say, in the pursuit of excellence, one person can make a difference. And then she says, point at yourself and say, in the pursuit of excellence, I will make a difference. Mr. Howell did make a difference. And we have to give God thanks for his life and give God thanks for his service to his country. May his soul rest in peace. May light shine perpetually on him and may God surround his family with the protection and with the support. May God bless all of you. Thank you very much. Isn't that just a great thought to leave? at a service like this. In the pursuit of excellence, one person can make a difference. And in the pursuit of excellence, I can make a difference. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you can make a difference. Just one word can change the atmosphere around somebody. Just one word can shift something over somebody's life. And sometimes we need to believe that word about ourselves. That I can make a difference. Come on, put your hands together for that. It's so fantastic. We're at the point where we turn the page on the program, and heading that is the congregational hymn, There's a Land Beyond the River. What is missing from the program is that's an offering that will be collected on behalf of the church. So we invite you to dig into your purses and into your pocketbooks and into your wallets. If you have to go down into, you know, that area and take an offering out as we give to the ministry here, the Mount Zion Apostolic Tabernacle and to their building fund. I just inquired of uh, Pastor Baker if there is a special project that's on and she indicated that they are yet still continuing. I think you mentioned a park. Yes, a park that needs to be completed. So do your best. And at my alma mater from primary school, the motto is, only the best is Amen. So as we stand, the ushers will wait upon you, which means they will pass the bucket around. And as my former bishop used to say, if you don't have anything to put in, then please don't take anything out. <laughs> God bless you. But let's stand as we sing this morning. There's a land beyond the There's a land.
a Tony Bonapos to life. Patient, strategic, and always with a sense of camaraderie. He was gentle, yet determined, fiercely loyal, of course, and very approachable, with a presence that was extremely calm. Tony died unexpectedly on December 9, 2023, and amidst his preparation of traveling to and celebrating Christmas in Canada, Tony was looking so much forward to that trip. Actually, myself and he was to travel, but there was a delay, and I had to go ahead of him. And it took us all by surprise that he didn't make it. As a family, we are still trying to come to terms with what has happened. But we are Christians and firmly believe that the Almighty God is perfect in all his ways and his ways, and his thoughts are higher than ours and who is always the eye that wants us. And so today, we come to his memory and the indelible mark he has left in our lives. <coughs> to say Tony will be missed is an understatement. He was greatly loved by a family who understood and accepted him completely for all that he was. His smile, his quiet determination, his humility, his gentle spirit, and his respect for all his children we will remember. Tony has never raised his voice to any of us and as we did him farewell today, we carry that with us. His legacy of warmth and love for, for life will remain with us. It was Job who said to his wife in Job 2, verse 10, You are talking like a foolish woman. Shall we accept good from God and not trouble? That's the NIV version. So today we humble ourselves before Almighty God and thank Him for the years He has given us with Tony. A father, a brother, an uncle, and a friend to many. We will seek to find solace and comfort in the memories he left and strength from those of us he left behind. Namely, his daughter Shevanese, his brothers Lloyd, his wife Sonia, Mikey, his wife Trudy, Bobby, Carlton, and wife Charlene, myself, Gary, and my wife Andrea, his only sister, Wisdom. He has also left behind his extended family of Michelle and her husband, Joseph, and children, Charmaine and her husband, Donald, cousins, nieces, the Anissis Tajira and Dane, and Nova Marie and Naomi May, and nephews Jonathan, Jomi, and Jomaira. Tony has left a spectrum of close friends who are too numerous to name, and it don't make sense to say this is the names, because if it's too much, I don't want to get in any trouble. So I don't, so I don't want to get in any trouble, so I won't start to listen to the names right now. And so, um, he has, and these persons we have left behind has impacted their lives in several ways, in many different ways. As we look to, he to the heavens today and glorify the Almighty God, we are reminded that the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be his name forever. May you rest in peace, my brother, and may perfect your life shine upon you. Thank you. 
This was what he said to me. I know, Shami, I will do so soon. Hence the song that I have chosen to sing. It may not bring lots of joy and rejoicing, but I want you to listen very carefully to the words of the song. Because I know his life, he did well on this rock. But there's a life beyond this rock. And there are many who are here today. I want you to pay close attention to the words of the song. Are you one of God's many children?
is an ongoing service for Tony. And he's speaking more powerfully right now than we have ever spoken in his life. Because while his remains are here, the words that are going forth are to those that are alive. And so we are making a shift in the program we had for our pastors down to give their own tributes. But I do believe that right now, we need to hear a word from God. And so we're going to ask Bishop Joseph Downer, our speaker this morning, to come and to lay out the word that God has released in this house for this season. Will you stand right now? As we receive right now, Bishop Joseph Downer and the Holy Ghost. Version. 
For all the days have driven away in your fury. We have finished our years like the sun. As for the days of your life, they contain 70 years. Or if you to strength, 80 years. Yet their pride is only trouble and tragedy. For it quickly passes and we disappear. Who understands the power of your enemy? And your fury according to the faith that is due you. So teach us to number our days that we may present to you the heart of wisdom. Some more will say amen. amen. Give our heads. Father, we thank you right now for this time that you have given to us. And I pray, God, that I seek to speak your heart, speak your mind to your people. I pray, God, that you do so with clarity of thought and that your will be done. We just want to thank you for this word in time and satisfy the hearts of the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Some more say amen. amen. And I do want to capture all this on the thought, made to expire. Amen. Some more? Made to expire. Now I want us to know, brother and sister, ladies and gentlemen, the sound of written by Moses and the power to God for his people Israel. Israel was given a death sentence after giving the promise of Canaan due to their fear on belief. They sojourned 40 years instead of 40 days and experienced the wrath of God. So here it is. Joshua would have been representing Israel and those who have left Egypt Himself and Caleb had made it to the promised land. And so in these verses, Moses is committing himself and his people before God by prayer for divine grace and mercy and the return of his favor. He seeks, therefore, to underscore the frailty of man. In spite of our little sisters, means to depart from this life to be no more. Retire on the Congress means to leave one's job and cease to work. Now, we can relate to products that serve us in different areas, products of different companies and those who work. And you move into the wholesale, the supermarket, and you see products that are there, they have a time to what? Amen. I, I have a daughter at home, and uh, sometimes she picks up these things and she says, Daddy, uh, this one expired. I said, This is, you know, how much I pay for it. <laughs> it can still be used. It might still be here. Yes. But the fact is, the mere fact they are on the shelf, there is a shelf life. And the recommended time is there that they will be what? Expired. And so the company sometimes sends in their agents and they remove these things off the shelf. Yes. Yes. And uh, I was given the USA um, and the US experiment also in some of those countries when it's close to the expiration date, they come in and take these things and send them off to other entities. Amen? Yes. Now, what defines your life before is the quality of life, as somebody mentioned earlier. And what defines the quality of life is that portion that God has control of. You see, the thing is, we give man a retirement age, but God gave man an expiration date. Hallelujah. There is Investments and we seek to have these things in place. But the thing about it is that we have an expiration plan. Do we? What do we do when we know we must expire? We must understand that this house is a house of clay. Yes, amen. And it must expire because it was made. Great spot. 
because it was not there. Spirit belongs to God. Hallelujah. It must go back to God. God is eternal. Hallelujah, somebody. The life of man is the spirit. Over to God, and the one about to become my spirit, you are a man of man. I want us to know, brothers and sisters, I understand that sometimes we take so much time just to fix this clay. Or it to look good. Is that so? And, uh, you know, some of the ladies can attest to the time that is spent in front of the mirror. Some of you did it this morning. <laughs> the men do. <laughs> because when you go out there, you want to be looking presentable. But I, I, I have some of you, when you get home, you're not going to take that time and you're not taking to prepare.
now is the opportunity. Sharon's testimony was, Tony always said, soon. Yeah. I will do so soon. How many of you here tomorrow, uh, today, are saying tomorrow? Yes. I'll say next week. When I get married, after I get the house, after married, I'm going to the US first. After sort of this and sort of that. But then tomorrow never comes. Right now. Touch your neighbor, say right now. Look to the person on the other side of you, say right now. It's a day of salvation. If you hear his voice, shall I say it one more time? If you hear his voice, and you know why that is here? Because some people have become so hard, so callous have become reprobate in their lifestyle and in their relationships so that they cannot hear the voice of God. So let me say it one more time. If you hear His voice, harden not your heart as in the day of the provocation when they fail to believe the word of God. And so they died in the wilderness. Give to Jesus all your days. For it's the only life that pays when you recall you have but one. As we stand in your presence, where your spirit is real and your conviction is strong, we ask that you give a chance and that your mercy will prevail. Show me all the 
thinking of who we are, not remember that we are both of us. And dust we are, and to dust we shall return. So we ask for your mercy. As we remain standing, I invite the family members to come just step forward as we invite Pastor King to come and to offer special privilege on their behalf. Mighty God of we pray for your mercy. Because Lord, you promised to 
all for us in this time of challenge and difficulty. But gracious God, the nights can be long and the nights can become dreary and the tears flow but remind them, Lord, you care for them. Yes. And you will never leave them. You will never leave them comfortless. You will never leave them alone. But even in the wee hours of the night, when they come and call each other, you are there with them. And you are there to help them through these challenging days. I pray, my God, we will buy them together with cards and kill them the room. We pray, my God, the unity that is being displayed. Lord, will never erode it, but God will be strong and it will continue, Lord, to be united with each other. Lord, I pray this morning for those who have not yet come into that relationship with you. We have heard your word this morning that here is a we Lord. Here comes a time when we all will expire. Yes. But Lord, we pray this morning that they will take heed to this word. Yes. Lord, they will come to a knowledge of who Jesus Christ is before it is too late. Yes. God, we come in the name And Lord, those who know you, we pray that they will be strengthened, rooted and grounded, establishing you. And the Lord, even in this challenging time, they will draw strength from you. We pray your blessings upon them. We pray your guidance and your direction. Holy Spirit, minister to them. Pour in the oil and the wine, the time that restore it to our soul. Gracious God, we call upon you for help. In Jeremiah chapter 33, you said we must call upon you and you will hear and answer us and you will show us great and mighty things that we do not know of. We call upon you now, Lord. And we pray that you will be with them. We come in them into your keeping here. Lord, we pray especially for his daughter. Lord, it is never easy to lose our parents. We are sure, mighty God, you love her this And she is precious to you. Precious so much that you died on the cross for her sins. Lord, I pray you will give her a special comfort as she mourned the loss of her father. We pray your blessing upon her. Lord, we just pray that your will and purpose will be accomplished. And we give you the glory, we give you the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated for just a bit. We're getting ready to get out of here. And we are just on the time that we set to be out. So we will be moving shortly. The call bearers, you know yourselves, please be on standby. Michael, Carlton, Gary, Neville, Dean, Barnes, Paul, and Farley. Please listen to the instructions. We're going to open the casket here. For those who might have come in late and did not get an opportunity to see the last viewing, we will not be over at the graveside. Amen? So during the scene of the final song and during the reception or just before you may march around and look at it as the, the funeral and funeral, um, the funeral from those from the funeral home to open the casket so that I can be done. Is that the back? march along in a circle and uh, you have an opportunity to see. We move from here to the interment which will take place at the Melrose Cemetery. Unfortunately, I am from Kingston and can't give that full direction, but I will try behind the details that I can do. Okay? 
We ask that you do not turn on your flashes, but rather use your headlights to indicate that you are in a procession and you will follow as quick as you can to go to the cemetery for the final portion of this morning's activity. On the back of your programs, there is an invitation, if you so wish, to join the family in fellowship at the VB and T catering services land settlement in Williams C. So we ask that you be a part of the remaining activities for today. So for the for now we ask that you also wait for the final uh, recessional that the platform party will go first. So here's what we do. We will move around in circles. So you move from the bench feet only. You move from the bench you are, you go around until you have seen if you so can the last remains. Are you with me? You come back to your seat and then we will have the final procession beginning recessional, beginning with the platform. So can we stand and have you can open for Thank you. So turn to the last song in your program, which is Sing the Wondrous Love of Jesus, Sing His Mercy and His Grace.